Greetings. My name is Stephen Carroll King, and uh, this is my friend Lee Davis. Uh, I want to get something off my chest. Maleficent is the worst Disney film I've ever seen in my life. We're gonna come back to that. <laughs> a lot. I want, I want you to hold on to that nugget for just a minute. First, we gotta go back and review Sleeping Beauty. So we watched both films earlier today. Uh, Sleeping Beauty and then we watched Maleficent. Let's start off by saying Sleeping Beauty, uh, yeah, it's an older Disney movie, so it's gonna be hard for, I think, current audiences. If people can like Ariel, they, <laughs> they can, can like, they can like, they Aurora. Can like Aurora. I think Aurora actually has more positive notes about her than Ariel does. See, Ariel, who tells her father she loves this man, uh, before she ever speaks to him. Aurora meets a boy in the woods and sort of, uh, you know, falls for him really quickly. But, but before things get hot and heavy, though, she, like, backs away, like, forcefully and, like, runs. And she's like, and she's like not until you meet my family, essentially, is what happens. She runs back to the house, tonight! And she tells her family, I can't wait, can't wait for you to meet him. She wants these people to all be together. Where well, Ariel is kind of like, screw my family, I want boys. <laughs> she didn't know, uh, she didn't know that Philip was a prince. No. Yeah. Yeah. No, he, was just a, he was just a boy that she met once upon a dream. <laughs> I mean, you know, he knew the song. He knew so this, yeah, yeah. This, that's one of the cool things about Philip is that Philip actually has game. Philip has some. He has some. <laughs> he has some good game. <laughs> Philip, you know, he sees her there dancing. He paid attention to the song. He learned the lyrics. He slipped in there super smooth like <laughs> instead of dancing. A lot of you guys can learn something from the, the Philip Mac game. He's not like the Philip and Maleficent, but we're not there yet. <laughs> Philip was the first. Because in Snow White, the prince didn't really have any uh, personality. He walked up to her saying, I got one song only for you. <laughs> Do you now? <laughs> How many girls have you said that to? I got one song, girl. Just for you. Only the one. <laughs> only the one. <laughs> Philip actually has a personality. He, uh, you know, he knows, he's, he's known forever that he was betrothed to this, uh, this princess. And he's totally willing to throw that away, <laughs> uh, you know, for this girl. A peasant girl, he thinks. Yes. Boy, a peasant girl. This movie is filled with... Color. It just color, love, was, a, yeah. color was nice. <laughs> color was... <laughs> yes. <laughs> very prevalent was the colors in this film. Now I gotta go, hold on. I gotta go get, look up the guy's name. Now it's just you and me, kitty. Just you and me. Oh, the camera can't see you there. No, okay. You're just gonna sit right there. Just you and me. Sleeping Beauty took about 10 years to make. Um, like the longest production of a, a movie I think in the Disney history. Um, they almost like broke the bank with it. It was not received very well critically. It didn't make a lot of money, which is why there wasn't a big like another princess film until like The Little Mermaid, you know, decades later. But this film was filled with so much beauty and color. The backgrounds, which were almost all done by one person, I uh, believe the name is Ivan Earl. If I pronounce it incorrectly, I apologize to his family. Uh, this artist who, as a kid, like he got, uh, Polio, but he didn't die, but half his face got like paralyzed. So all he was allowed to do as a kid was just paint all day long. And he, the, the paintings, the um, the style of his film is different than any other uh, Disney film. Um, and all from the characters to the backgrounds, uh, everything is is filled with this beautiful color and style. It would have been nice to have seen some of that pass over <laughs> to the live action realm. It doesn't. Yeah. Um, a lot of it doesn't. <laughs> a lot of it doesn't. Actually, I we get different colors in Maleficent. <laughs> different um, colors. More of the monochrome variety. Yes. Um, the, the film is it's, it's gorgeous to look at. Like every every frame. Um, Sleeping Beauty, right? Sleeping Beauty. Okay. Yes. So the Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> There's nothing I love more than a strong female character. Americans can't do it very well. The heroes, the protagonists of this film, it's not Aurora. The movie isn't about her. The movie is about uh, the three fairies. Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether are their names, by the way. <laughs> In case Maleficent has you confused. These are three women who give up everything that they have. Willingly. Willingly. Willingly give up everything they have to look after for a child who's not their own, um, and a, to become part of a world that they are not familiar with, because they are fairies, they're not humans. They take care of this girl for 16 years. She becomes the most precious thing in the world to them. So like whenever they tell her that, she, oh, sorry, uh, you can't marry that boy, you can't ever see him again because you're a princess and uh, you gotta go marry this dude, uh, sorry. 
Like, it breaks their heart. They start crying and they feel terrible about it. They're the real heroes of the movie. Like, I mean, it's cool that Prince Philip, you know, has a sword and a, and a shield and stuff. But he would have died 1,000 times over <laughs> if the fairies were not consistently giving him power-ups and protecting him from boulders and hot molten, like, uh, oil. <laughs> oil. Souls of children. Yeah. They all but guide that sword into Maleficent's <laughs> chest at the end. <laughs> so yes. Yes, they did. So it's pretty much just, it's pretty much just them. Like, Prince Philip is along for the ride. He's the vessel. <laughs> he is the vessel <laughs> in, the in which they uh, put their power through. These are women who are terrified to go to Maleficent's castle, but they go anyway, and they take care of business. But even, even the little side characters, like in, with uh, Stefan, King Stefan is really, really, you know, he's worried about his, his daughter, you know, he's worried that she might even be getting married too fast. He's like, you know, you, know, don't you think it'll be a shock for her? You, he you know. even gives her up for 16 years to protect her. Exactly. And it obviously bothers them, but he does it because he cares, and he knows the fairies, and trust yes, them, he, unlike... Yes, he knows and trusts the fairies. That's another, like, at the beginning they announced, the three good fairies! We're all familiar here. This is someone who you're going to give your daughter to for 16 years, you better be good friends. Like, they seem like they're all really, really close. King Hubert was the other guy. And he was cool, that. he was cool too. In the end, when Philip came back and he was like, nah, Dad, I don't want to marry Aurora, I want to go marry the girl that I met in the woods. The peasant girl. The peasant girl. That he had to suck that up and he was going to tell Stefan, my son wants to marry this peasant girl, and by thunder, he's gonna marry a peasant girl, and he was willing to do that, and that's pretty, you know, and that's pretty cool too. You know, in my opinion, this movie is full of uh, cool humans and fairies. Even though Maleficent is, the thing about Maleficent in the uh, in Sleeping Beauty, what makes her so cool, and I often say a really good hero is only as cool as their villain. Like Luke Skywalker would not been have, at, well, he would not have been as cool without Darth Vader. Without someone good to, uh, to go up against. Aladdin and Jafar, you know. Hercules uh, and Hercules and Hades. Hades. Hades is fantastic. The Hades, best best villain. The best kind of villains are the ones that you love to hate. The ones with you know with attitude. You know, it's a uh, personality. Yeah. You don't need backstory. Exactly. You don't we need just to, need back. We yeah. just need personality. And then that's essentially it. You know, I'm, I know people who are like, but Tina, not everyone's evil. I love that they go back and show that she's not really the bad guy. And I'm like, okay. It's the new. It's what once upon a time. Is do, is, yeah, every, doing? everyone's doing it right now. It's turning the villains in, uh, into these sympathetic, um, blubbering uh, characters. Emotional sacks of <laughs> terrible. It's it's really <laughs> bad, and it's it's not original anymore because everyone's doing it. I I firmly blame Wicked for <laughs> that. all of it. When I first heard about Maleficent, I thought it was cool. I thought they were going to be telling the, her story up until the point of where. Uh, Sleeping Beauty begins. Yeah. As we were watching the movie, um, I said, you know what the movie should have ended? Is the scene where she walks into the castle and goes, well, well, well. <laughs> like, boom, credits. That's where the movie should have ended. It should have ended where Sleeping Beauty began. And that would have been really, that would have been cool if we have to find out, find out about Maleficent, if we have to find out about <laughs> why in the world she's evil. We could have explained up to a point. She could have still been this amazing villain. She's so deliciously evil, she, she locks Philip up. She's not gonna kill him. No, she's gonna make him wait a hundred years yes. and then let him go. Keep his horse alive. Keep his horse alive. Let them go. Go kiss the princess when they're like nine thousand years old, knowing that she'll wake up, but then probably reject them because they're old yeah. and wrinkly. Ex yeah, it's, and she's just she's willing to go in for the for the slow kill, and that brings her so much joy. She's like, I'll sleep soundly for the first time in sixteen years. <laughs> Knowing what I've accomplished today, <laughs> it's uh, it's like it seems like she got mad because she didn't get invited to a party. She curses a baby <laughs> because she didn't get an invite. Like she brings curses a baby with death. With death, that was another important thing. Is in Sleeping Beauty, the curse is she will prick her finger on the spindle of a spinning wheel and die. Peace, Mitchie Boochies, <laughs> and she flies off. Um, and it's like that, you know, that's <laughs> like she's gonna prick her finger and then she's gonna die. And then uh, Meriwether uh, uses her last wish to fix the curse. Um, Downgrade it to sleeping. <laughs> yes. Break your finger and sleep for. It, yeah, until... you sleep until you know true love's kiss. You know, in in true you know fairy tale form, we know that she's a sorceress. That thing that that much is made clear. So if she can do what you know whatever her powers. You you already know enough. That's another weird thing about Maleficent is you are confused with how the magic in that movie works. And here, Maleficent is just a sorceress. She has power. She, she has, does what she wants. <laughs> she does what she wants. She, you know, she, uh, she has 
uh, minions, which she will, will use, but she can also vanish into thin air. Um, she can fly across the sky like streamers. She makes thorns rise out of the ground. She turns into a freaking dragon. She turns into a dragon. <laughs> Not the crow. <laughs> Not the crow. She, she says, and all the powers of hell. Like, <laughs> as a kid, I'm like, oh, <gasps> all the powers of hell. <laughs> run, Philip, run! <laughs> About, does she. about names. <laughs> about names. Names are movies. important. Names are important. Names are very important. Incredibly so. Um, Maleficent means evil. It's like the root the, 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 the words. If it was an original story and they wanted to be like, oh, well, names don't matter, it would have been different. But this is Maleficent is and her Maleficent. crow. And her crow, Diabol. And according yes. to Sleeping Beauty, they're evil and lord over everything that is evil, not lord over Avatar. Yeah, dude, yeah, like, Diabol is, I mean, even without talking and becoming a man, a pretty man person, <laughs> Diabol is a cool character in Sleeping Beauty. Like, he's the only, uh... Decent like, minion? Yeah, he's a really, really good minion. Like, he flies off, he finds, they couldn't find her in 16 years. <laughs> Diabol finds him, like, th yeah, the fairies were screwing up there and seeing color, but Diabol finds them in a day. Um, whenever the fairies are snooping around in the castle, Diabol senses that, and even though Maleficent leaves, he comes back because he senses shenanigans. With... All of the other henchmen that can fight. Yes, like he went and got the other henchmen. Like he's taking care of things. Like the, the fairies keep blocking stuff. He's like, all right, fine, go get somebody else. He keeps alerting everybody. Like he gets he gets turned to stone for all of his trouble. <laughs> but right, like, he, he keeps trying to chase them. He doesn't give up. He does no. Um, like Diabol is legit. You don't have to be pretty and CW fine uh, to be cool. You don't have to be Loki. Sometimes you can just be a crow. <laughs> oh. Oh. Now let's get into Maleficent. Look. So the movie starts off, and the first, like, 30 seconds or so, I didn't have any issues with it. <laughs> I was a little confused, but I didn't... Yeah, like, at first, I was like, you might mistake her for a girl. She was a fairy. No, it started off by telling you that the human world... That's, that's another thing about writing movies that, like, for babies. The audience deserves more credit than a world where all the humans were super evil, and all the fairies were super nice and in tune with life. But in a world where all the men are so... No, not just the men, just every other character. This movie, where the original Sleeping Beauty, for its time especially, was filled with characters with many, many dimensions. Yeah, Maleficent is evil, but I'm not necessarily going to call her one-dimensional. She's someone who loves what she does, and she's committed to it. And that commitment is what makes her cool. Um, in this movie, humans are bad, fairies are good. That's where it starts. And then it starts getting into time jumps. Not to mention the narration. Not to mention that Maleficent was the only one that kind of looked like a fairy until the other three show up, and That's even then Maleficent didn't look like a fairy at all. Yeah, everything everything magical is a fairy now. There's only three little uh, pixies or fairies, whatever you want to call them in this movie, that look like the three fairies. And there's only one Maleficent, like, what is she? She's like, my parents are dead, and they don't touch on that ever again. Is there nothing else in the fairy realm like you? Where did you come from? Why do you look like that? Where did you learn magic? If we're going to open up all these these other doors and you know barely peek inside, then what's the point? She's a fairy, she's got she's got wings, there's nothing else like her in the world, and she also knows magic. Which the the magic is confusing. And convenient. And convenient in this film. <laughs> the magic works according to the script. Whatever the script needs, the magic will allow at that point in time. Cause she has magic, but she only uses her wings to fight the uh Army. The army at the beginning. Gotta get those cool battle shots. I know, yeah, I... Because everybody has to fight these days. If you feel like your p character, like, um... Has to show off. Has to show off. Has to, to has be to, cool. To, yeah, then you miss the point. When three little fat fairies are cooler than in shape Maleficent flying around with wings, um, you know, maybe there's like, maybe there's a problem. But maybe there isn't a problem. Maybe it's just how we, uh, we perceive things. Now, a storytelling basic. This is 101. You can have an opening, a little bit of narration, you know, every now and again. A little bit of exposition isn't a bad thing. Even Sleeping Beauty opens up with a small bit of narration. So and so and so and so. This is where we live in. Um, the baby was born and there was a huge, you know, coronation. And that's all they tell you. And they show you the rest. <laughs> this movie has the audacity to have this narrator explain everything to you. Like, I'm all about, sh you know, show, don't tell. Show me what happens. You want me to believe that Maleficent fell in love with Stefan? Show me. Don't just tell me. You really get to know little Maleficent. Like, even though I hate what they're doing, I could try, I could attempt to feel something. 
if you gave me the time to get to know these people, to get to know young Stefan, you see them for two seconds, he runs off. And now they're in love, are they? And then now they're teenagers for like 10 seconds. And now she's grown up. Um, and so... Cool stuff has happened. Yeah. We're not going to show you. They're not going to show you anything that happened. And but it happened. And, like, and Stefan became enchanted by the world of men and so on. So, okay, yeah, fine. You know, just, <laughs> why make a movie? It's so simple. If you're trying to make a movie to show that um, villains have more dimensions, that there's more to life and nothing is just black and white, then why do you start off by making a black and white world where men are evil and fairies are good and every single male character in your story is a, uh, either a backstabbing uh, date rapist, um, completely useless, not, ne not necessary, or a man slave? How am I supposed to feel <laughs> represented in your film? <laughs> oh, my God. Maleficent uh, and Stephen meet again. And, they're like, and the, the years melted away and everything was like it was before. That's nice. How was it before? <laughs> you didn't show me. You just told me that stuff happened. I was like, I can't feel anything because you won't let me. And for me to feel something when time passes is to have spend time with characters. And the Maleficent as an adult is so different from the, the Maleficent as a child. I can't compare the two, there's no bridging, because you know Little Maleficent for about six, seven minutes before she is adult Maleficent, and they're two completely different people. I can't connect these people, like there's several plot points that needed to happen, but nothing connecting them. <laughs> How are you telling your story? So yeah, she knows magic, and she's able to super walk all super mean and be knocking uh, stones over and uh, turn crows into people and... Why does she walk? Why does she walk? Why does she, she walk? You can fling people around, but you can't make yourself fly. You can't teleport. <laughs> yeah, like the it's... Maleficent Sleeping Beauty can teleport. She can teleport. She didn't need wings. She's... She, <laughs> she blew the castle doors open for the novelty of doing so, because then she just teleported into the center <laughs> of the throne room. Maleficent don't need no doors. Whereas... <laughs> the... And Maleficent... <laughs> she, she walks through the door, but you don't get to see it blown open. No. <laughs> Real quiet entrance. She does. Um, Oh. I lacked the punch. They say that the people in the moors don't need a king or queen. But right from, off the bat. But from the beginning, they're already treating Maleficent like she is their deity. Like, she, you know, they can't do anything without her. They tell her about everything. She's the protector of the moor. She's the protector of the moor. Like, they... She is like the most important person there. She she voices... She's, she voices their concerns. She, she represents them. Yet, for some reason, whenever she's... When drugged by Stefan... There's nobody else in the moors around to see this. And when she screams out in agony at her wings being cut off, nobody comes to her aid. What's going on here? Oh, we we'll take a break for our sponsors. <laughs> I need the movie to make sense because I'm not charmable. Like, you can't put a puppy in front of me and go, oh, <laughs> You are so manipulated by what's going on that you don't realize that nothing makes sense. They're pulling at your easiest heartstrings, and you're buying it, you're eating it up. Well, like cake. We weren't. We weren't. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Y'all basic. <laughs> it's the only movie I've ever seen in my life where I wanted to walk out of the theater. I stayed, but it hurt. Me and Disney have this relationship. You know, I grew up with them giving me the best of everything. It's like having this friend who's a really great chef who cooks you great meals all the time. Hey, bro, here's some Aladdin. Yeah, <laughs> some Beauty and the Beast. Spits in the frog for you, bro. You know, it's you, you, you're taken care of. And then one day, he brings you this dish that he's been talking up for a while now. He's like, yeah, it's just like that Sleeping Beauty that you that uh, I made you a while back. You're gonna love it. It's but it's better though. It's it, it's 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 got more flavor. It's got more more seasonings. And you you take a bite inside, and it's straight up. Dookie twists. The <laughs> us who have been eating off the Once Upon a Time plate were prepared for this. Yes. Actually, I only saw like a season and a half, right? I wasn't ready. Um, <laughs> it progressively gets worse. But we get into the, the three fairies. Now, this is this is what hurt me the most. The thing about Sleeping Beauty is this: this is a rare case of a studio bringing you its own story. It's not telling you the story of Sleeping Beauty. It's retelling the story of Disney's Sleeping Beauty. It's not as if DreamWorks made a movie about Sleeping Beauty. This is Disney retelling their own story. And at the beginning telling you that they told it wrong before, or that you know it incorrectly. So that brings upon these weird mixed feelings <laughs> inside of me, telling me that what I know is incorrect. 
um, and in the fairies. And these three amazing characters who run that show and turning them into the three most insipid... There's no one that you can like in Maleficent, especially the fairies. I liked the crow. The crow? No, I, I can get, like, Divya... The only did, did, one. Or Divya, is that what I'm saying? Divya, yeah. John Crow. Yeah, John Crow. John Crow, <laughs> John crow is totally cool. John, John Crow is the only character I liked in this, <laughs> in this movie. I was I was okay with him. I, know, I like the scene where he comes up to Maleficent and he's like, Yeah, hey, dude, this, this kid right here, two loves kiss. She's like, uh, I made the curse that way because there's no such thing. I was like, well, yeah, well, you might feel that way about it. Like, what about her? Right. He, yeah. He actually cares. He actually, yeah, no, he about actually. About her. No, he's, he's much more, his personality. He's the one that took care of her. He played with her when she was little. Yeah. He fed her for the weird boob flowers. He was rocking her, the, the boob flowers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we never get a reason why he stopped playing with her either. And that kind of bothered me. There's a lot of things you don't get a reason for in this movie. <laughs> I know. Like, what happened to the, like, Aurora's all uh, doing stuff. What happened to the fairies at that point in time? The three fairies, who Aurora was the most important thing in their life in the Sleep Beauty, um, they were looking after, after her as if as if it was some sort of... Um, begrudgingly. Yeah, begrudgingly. Like, they didn't really want to be there. Um, they snap at her, like, look, I did not waste 16 years of my life to tell, you the know... Best the best years. The best years of my life here with you just because of someone, you know, all this jazz. It, it and hurt. just so... They're, 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 there's nothing likable about them, or any of the characters in this movie, but especially Wildly the fairies. Wildly incompetent. They're fairies, they have magic. Can they not sense the other fairy that they grew up with, apparently, and See, were bros with? That's another, yeah, the thing about making them all grow up in the same place. And at the beginning, they come to Maleficent with their problems. They come to her and they're like, hey, there's a kid over here doing so-and-so and so-and-so. Like, they're all friends. And so that scene where Maleficent walks in there and she's like, oh, even the rabble. <laughs> like, what is it, where did that come from? What did they ever do to you? Or why are you guys enemies now because that scene had to be ripped straight from the original movie and that scene has no place in this movie because that character Maleficent does not exist in this world. Maleficent isn't allowed to become evil. You can have an evil character. You can even give them some more dimensions and still have them be evil. Like a hero is only as good as, as their villain and in this movie their villain is King Stefan. Yeah. But he's a joke. <laughs> he's just all over the place. It's all over the, like there's his accents all over the place. Yeah, well yeah that too. Uh, but, but um like I don't know what to tell you about Stefan. Like you, you keep telling me things about him. Every time you show me, he's a, he's a different level of crazy. <laughs> Every time he shows up. Um, uh, he, no, nothing anyone does in this film is rational. No. Nothing. Why didn't he burn the moor like right off the bat? He knew she. He knew. Yeah, he looked outside. She survived. Yeah, he saw her stream of green <laughs> lightning go up in the sky. Oh shoot! She's mad. She's mad now. Imagine that. All right, it's dinner time. Um, <laughs> Whatever the script needs them to be at that point in time, we need him to be sympathetic right now so that she doesn't die. We need him to turn evil so that there's a bad guy at the end. We need Aurora's mother to die off screen. <laughs> that was another low blow. This movie wanted you to feel sorry for Maleficent. They needed you to feel for Maleficent, but you couldn't feel for anybody else. You couldn't like anybody else because we need you to feel this empathy for Maleficent. So the fairies, who were the caretakers in the original film, had to be bumbling, bumbling idiots. idiots. You had to want Aurora to have this connection with Maleficent. Because if that's if that was the case, then the three fairies who loved her more than life itself in the first film could have cured her uh, in her sleep. Aurora's mother, who didn't seem like a bad person in the live action film, she only had a couple of lines. Like she didn't seem you know terrible. But in the world of men, only the men are evil. The women are okay. But they but they killed Aurora's mother off screen. Uh, they didn't let you have any time to get to know her because that would that, that, that would have been detrimental to their plan of having you feel sorry for Maleficent. Um, they killed her off screen and had Stefan not even care. It's so manipulative. You're being told what to feel here. I don't like being told what to do. A anybody out there who liked Maleficent, I beg you to go watch Princess Mononoke. Because I it was done right? Because it was done correctly by Hayao Miyazaki. A film with the human world and the forest world. People with different ideas and values. There is a female character, Lady Eboshi, who is running the Iron Town. She's bought up all the prostitutes and uh, raise them lepers. to be and lepers to raise them to be gun-toting people who can take care of themselves. She treats them like they're people, and she's supposed to be the antagonist. She is, and she is, even though. But she her reasons for doing so, you're kind of like, well, that goes against the protagonist, so that makes her the antagonist. But I also can kind of see where she's yeah, where she's come from. from and what she's done to these people. Like she, she's not one-dimensional. Where she, yeah, she's technically the villain. Um, but she, like, you don't, you don't hate Lady Eboshi, or if you do, you can decide how you want to feel based on what they're giving to you. It's a beautiful film that does everything correctly that Maleficent didn't even try to do. He took away all the things that made Maleficent so cool. 
um, and left you with this sorry, sad sack of... <laughs> she didn't even... The curse. She didn't even want to kill Aurora. She's like, you're going to have a sleep like death. <laughs> yes. But it's only a sleep. It's okay. That was um, a big plot point in the original one. She said she'll prick her finger on the spindle of a spinning wheel and die. And here... She, the, the coolest thing about it, um, you will be asleep like that. Okay, all right. Okay, you got me. Peace. <laughs> like I can't. <laughs> we never see the third fairy's the, the wish. The third fairy's wish. That was it. Doesn't that, happen. Like that was a cool um, plot point in the first one. Oh, there's, there's a wish left. It's okay. I can fix this. I, but you, there was nothing to fix. Yeah, you never find out what that wish was. <laughs> um, and then she tries to revoke the curse. Yes, she feels so sad. I revoke the curse. <laughs> I'm like, man, you are so lame. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you can't even stick through with your villainy. And that's yeah. not a villain. And, like, and, 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 not that early in the film. I'm okay with villains, like... She really had time to become a villain. Like, she, when she gets all mean and goes back to the moors and she's all super angry and stuff, and they're all like, oh... And the tree guys are like, yo, you better bow. They're like, okay. And that's the extent of... So what did she... What did she do yeah. now? <laughs> get her yeah, aside from stalking Aurora. Yeah, aside from, yeah, she of stalking taking care of Aurora over the years. Literally all you ever see her do. Yeah. So I'm left to What has she done for sixteen years all this time? <laughs> Just she's been keeping Aurora alive since the three fairies are trying to kill her, you know, you know, <laughs> We come to a super generic ending where the bad guy comes out in his newly upgraded Skyrim armor. <laughs> um <laughs> straight uh, out of Game of Thrones. In a good story, everything that happens there is a reason for it. They wanted to turn Maleficent into a superhero. Because mm -hmm. they... And you know, it's true, there aren't, there aren't enough female superheroes. That's messed up. Maleficent didn't need to be one. No, because <laughs> she is just as god-awful as the rest. Yes. I'm just feeling sad that, you know, we can't do better than this. Because we can. We can do so much better than this. There's no real substance, not even just talking about the story, because that also applies to that. <laughs> Everything's CG. No. Yeah, I um in a world where everything is it's CG and it all looks super cheap. Like I understand, you know that some. No, I won't. Because Guillermo <laughs> del Toro, when he makes a Hellboy film, puts people in makeup. He'll put Doug Jones in like fifteen costumes. This movie had the budget of God, <laughs> and they went the cheap route, making everything look super weird and cartoony. It didn't fit in the real world. Um, and it looks fake. It looks like I like I was saying when we were watching it. There are cosplayers that can make <laughs> beautiful wings. Yeah. Like cosplayers that don't have a budget, yeah. not professional, that look amazing, and this movie had the budget. Oh, it's funny, when Philip, <laughs> when Philip finally arrived here, I was like, oh yeah, there's a princess movie too. <laughs> um, like, For like, how much screen time did he get? Five minutes? Philip is com he's completely useless in this film. He doesn't matter. He doesn't have game. He he's not he charming. It's, um, he's weird. It's weird. Like, he's, when they meet, there's no chemistry there. There's no sparks. There's no... Like, it's aw It's awkward. Like, I feel like, oh... Um, the, the romance was also CGI. <laughs> the romance was as fake as the fairies. In the background and the everything background. else in the movie. In this movie. And so, I mean, and then they force him out there to uh, even just to sort of slap fairy tales in the face by saying how useless he is. And the fairies are... Like forcing him to kiss the sleeping girl. And he seems kind of... He's like, yeah, I want to kiss her, but she's kind of asleep and that's kind of weird. Yeah, weird. Yeah, they're like, kiss her, kiss her. And he's like... Not sure if want. Um, yeah, it makes it weird. Like, you're making all of us very uncomfortable with this, with this scenario. Take Prince Philip out if you have to. Like, don't put put him there and then make him a completely pointless character. There's a, there's a way to do strong female leads. Mulan. And Mulan. 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 Is my favorite ever. Ask me how mad I am they took her out of Once Upon a Time. How mad are you? I'm so, I'm, I'm so mad. The three fat little old fairies were all the girl power that this film didn't have, and it worked. Don't try to trick me, <laughs> Disney. I expect more from you. We deserve better. Women deserve better than to be treated like the only thing that can turn them evil is a man. Men deserve better than to be treated like the only thing that we want to do is to take advantage of women and have power. This movie is disrespectful to the audience, to the... Tale of Sleeping Beauty to the 10 years of work it took to make the original and all the heart and soul that went into that wonderful project. And you should feel bad about that. We should riot. We should. <laughs> we should. It's time to start looting. We can go to Disney World. Jeez. We can go hit all the Disney stores and yes. all the malls. That's right. To, to, to protest. <laughs> We're doing this for the kids. <laughs> You can check out the rest of our videos by clicking the things below there. Hit the subscribe button and share this video with your friends or your enemies.
Or your frenemies? Uh, your frenemies. Can't leave them out. Uh, and thank you, Lee, for uh, suffering. Our suffering. She did it for the children. <laughs> I did. Someone yes. has to. I know you. I want you to. <laughs>